Russell. Every group has a leader. Talk to them if you want to get connected, all right? We're going to get into this. I'm reading from the book of Matthew. It is the first book in the Newest Testament, okay? I'm reading from NLT, the New Latino Translation, if you will. I'm just kidding, it's NIV. Okay, everybody, if you haven't seen it up there, I'm reading Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. I'm going to go ahead and get into this, all right? Everybody look at the screens. Here we go. Let's, let's dive in. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, repeat, Capernaum. I might be saying it wrong, I don't know. All right? A centurion came to him asking for help. If you don't know what a centurion is, I'm going to tell you right now. The Latin root cent means 100. That's why you hear century, 100 years, 100 cents is obviously one dollar. Okay? Centurion <laughs> translates to captain of 100. Wherever this dude was, there was 100 soldiers right behind him. All right? This dude was brave, courageous, terrifying, scary. If you were a Jew back in the day and you saw a centurion, you would probably cry, go inside, and hug yourself in a Snuggie and start watching Netflix. Because that's how scary he was, just to get your mind off. Daredevil season two is awesome. Okay, moving on. He said, the centurion, verse six, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man of authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Look at this right here, this is important, all right? When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Someone say, he was amazed. He was amazed. Amazed, mind blown. He said, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Guys, I've studied my Bible. I've taken New Testament surveys, Old Testament surveys, surveys to give me a $5 gift card at Subway. So I know surveys, and I know some about a little bit about the New Testament. Okay. Guess how many times Jesus was amazed in his entire biblically recorded life? Just throw out a number. One. Two. One. Two, three. One. Twenty-one. One. One. Six. Five. You guys, okay. One. All right. Jesus was amazed One. twice One. Oh, 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 in the entire life of his, his biblically recorded life twice. This was the first one. The second one is found in Mark chapter 6. I'm just going to read it to you. Verses 5 through 6. He said this. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed. Someone say, he was amazed. He was amazed. That's so amazing. He was amazed by their lack of faith. One instance, amazing faith. Another instance, lack of all right, this is what we're talking about. Where's your faith at, Jesus? How do you amaze him? All right, we're gonna go ahead into this. We see, actually, guess this. All right, Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. Guess where Jesus was, where there was so much lack of faith. I'll give you a hint. Jesus of Nazareth. His hometown is where people were unamazed. His hometown, where people saw him grow up, where people grew up with him, those were the people who were unbelieving about his faith, about what Jesus' miracles were. And guess what? A centurion, a Roman, this guy doesn't know anything about Jewish religion. He doesn't know anything about churches, synagogues. He doesn't know anything about rabbis. Sadducees, Mercedes, he doesn't know none of that. All he knows is that there's a man right there who's able to help me with this, all right? Let me tell you the reasons why the people from his hometown didn't believe him or didn't even want to have anything to do with him, all right? The first one, if you're taking notes, this is how you have lack of faith. One, rejection. The Nazarene faith rejected Jesus 
and because that, Jesus could not perform his miracles. Not that he could not, but that because he would not. He could have set everyone on fire. He could have lifted people from the dead. He could have healed someone who was lame from birth. He could have said, hey, get up. What you doing on the floor? Goofy. He could have done all that, but he would not because of their lack of faith. The next thing is their comfortability. They grew up with Jesus. They grew up watching Jesus. They saw he was just a son of Joseph. They didn't see a Messiah. They didn't see a God. Come they on. didn't see none of that. They just saw a person. So they got comfortable with him. They said, oh, this guy, I saw him growing up. I saw his mom wipe his butt when he was like oh, two months old. He, he's God? I'm gonna try to whistle it work. But he saw they got comfortable with him, all right? You might get so comfortable in your relationship with God, you forget what he's able to do, and you forget what he is able to do for you and the miracles he can perform for you, all right? Let's have, who wants to talk about the satiric faith? The pagan faith. The guy who didn't believe in God in the first place. The one who didn't know about scripture. The one who didn't know about church or faith of anything besides worshiping a hundred gods. Who wants to know about why he was so faithful? Why his faith amazed Jesus more than the faith of his hometown? Who wants to know? That's a wow, right? Okay, cool. Let's find out. The centurion faith. Number one, how he did it. Acceptance. The centurion saw Jesus and knew of his capabilities and he was able to ask for help. Number two, he was uncomfortable. He was never comfortable in his faith. He knew his hundreds of gods couldn't do the job. And he identified the one who was able. And he was standing right in front of him. Number three, humility. He was able to stand in front of his soldiers. Like I said, a centurion, no matter where he goes, 100 soldiers. His servants will be there wherever he goes. This guy was scary, terrified. He was a killer. He was a train killer. This guy was the backbone of the Roman army back then, okay? Isn't that cool? And guess what? He was able to do that in front of 100 of his soldiers, take his helmet off, kneel before him, he probably didn't, but this is what I would see the centurion doing and say, my servant is home paralyzed. He needs help. Can you please heal him? Jesus didn't see a centurion. He didn't see a man of, a le of leadership. He, was, he could have been prideful. He said, oh, my servant's dying. I'll just get a new one. Jesus, I don't need you. I'm a centurion. I can freaking kill you. I don't care. This guy, he was a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. To a Roman centurion, he was like garbage, pretty much. And they see his soldiers watching his boss kneeling before a Jew. I'm like, what do you think you're doing? He's a Jew. Why are you kneeling before him? Why are you humbling yourself before him? Asking for help. Just get a new servant. What's your problem? But the centurion knew that yeah. he was a God who was able yeah. to perform a miracle for him. Yeah. He, Jesus didn't look at the centurion and see a centurion. He didn't see a man of leadership, of pride. He saw a man with a problem. And he was able to do something because Jesus approached him. When we, how about this? The Nazarenes rejected Jesus. What if right now, Jesus is trying to do something in your life right this second. He's trying to invade your world. He's trying to do something for your school, for your college, for your finances, trying to get you a job. He's trying to do these things for you. But instead, you try to do something on your own. You try to say, I'm gonna apply for all these jobs and see what happens. You don't have the faith to believe that Jesus can provide for you. That's good. You don't believe that Jesus can help you. You guys, this is what happened, all right? You reject Jesus. And let me tell you, when Jesus was rejected, there's no record of him going back to Nazareth. There's no record of him going back to his hometown. You, we are so lucky that Jesus comes back to us. That he's so graceful and grateful to us. Because if, it was, if he was here and he saw the things we were doing, I wouldn't want to come back. If I was Jesus, I'd be like, what the heck? You want to reject me? I'm trying to help you. Deuces.
okay? But he's not like that. He says, I'm gonna help you even if you push me aside, I'm still gonna try to do what you, what I need to do to you. I have a plan for you, but we wanna reject Jesus and we wanna push him to the side like the Nazarenes did. They didn't care. I don't care that you can help me. I can do it myself. There are a lot of people of us like to say that. I can do it myself. Have we gotten so comfortable in our relationship with God that we forget what he can do in our lives? Right. This centurion, he humbled himself in front of a hundred of his soldiers. He got to his knee and said, yes, I do need help. But some of us can't even come to the altar and lift our hand without thinking our friend's gonna think something weird about us. We can't even go to school and say, God bless you, man, without thinking somebody's gonna look at us weird. We can't even go out and pray for someone when Come they on. need help Come on. without getting dirty looks. But a centurion, a man who's brave, courageous, a killer, he can kneel before a Jew and say, I need your help. How come he can do that, but we can't even do that in our school or in our streets or in our neighborhood? Why is that? How can a pagan, he can do that, but I can't? That's, that's some goofy stuff, if you ask me. <laughs> and let me tell you, when Jesus was home and the people were rejecting him, that's, that can be like us. How many of us tell our friends our goals? How many of us tell the people that are closest to us our dreams? The ones that are closest to you are the ones who are closer enough to stab you in the back. Yep. Yep. Okay, that can happen to you. I will say, dude, I'm going to become a great NBA star. Dude, I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to get a 4.0 GPA. I don't care, man. I don't, I'm a dude. And then your friend goes, I dare you to. You're right. You're crazy. Like I said, Jesus didn't choose not to want to do a miracle. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. He chose not to do want to do the miracles. Not that he couldn't, but that he wouldn't. When your friend tells you something you can't do, it's going to put you down, and you're not going to believe you can do it. You're going to be like, I can do this, man. I'm going to get a 4.0 GPA. I'll become a doctor. I'll train every day to be a basketball player. But your friend says, yo, man, you can't even dribble. You can't even handle. You got no handles. You can't even shoot from the three. What you talking about? You can't even hit a free point, man. You're talking about going to the NBA goofy. Nothing but goofiness, man. And then you're gonna just feel down, man. What the heck, I thought, I, I, I practice, I could do it. You practice hard, you work hard, and you're gonna achieve. And you have to have the faith to do it. Amazing faith, you have to have faith that amazes Jesus. You have to have faith, either you're gonna amaze him like the centurion, or you're gonna amaze him like the Nazarene. Come on. Wow. Lack of faith. Or amazing faith how do you amaze Jesus where is where are you at right now like the Nazarene get away from me I can do it myself the centurion when he looks at you he doesn't see the NBA stuff he doesn't see how many shoes you have in your closet he doesn't see what your abilities are I saw people flipping around he doesn't care if you're a ninja warrior all he sees is someone with a problem he sees your heart he doesn't look at the outside he looks at the inside are you humble? Are you able to put yourself down and say, I need your help. I can't do it by myself. Jesus, please, I can't do it myself. I need your help. And he's the one who's able to help you. But we can say, Jesus, I need your help. Or we can say, Jesus, I can do it myself. You can have the Nazarene faith or the Centurion faith. Number one, how can we have lack of faith? What was the first one? Anyone remember? It starts with the R. Rejection. Rejection. Wow. What was number two? Comfortability. Comfortability. Wow. Number, number one of how we can have great faith. Acceptance. The, it's the opposite. Number two, you have to be uncomfortable. You can't be comfortable where you are. You can't be comfortable in your relationship. Because you're just going to see Jesus as an idea of something when he's actually a whole person that can help you guys out. Three. Okay. Number three is your humility. A centurion was able to be in front of a hundred soldiers and he was able to, he was able to say, I need help. 
Where are we at? Are we so scared that we're afraid of what people will think? Or are we going to be brave and courageous? Yeah. Then we had the band up here, our choir members. We're about to start praising God because that's what we do. So how do you amaze Jesus? Have you gotten so comfortable in our relationship with God that we lost our drive to have faith that amazes Jesus? You can amaze Jesus yourself. You can either amaze Jesus with your faith or lack of faith. How many want to have faith like a baby? Like the centurion with hundreds of soldiers behind him not caring. Who wants to be unashamed tonight? Who wants to be unashamed? I know I do. We're going to go ahead and get into praise and worship. All right, I'm gonna pray for you guys because I got I want you guys to have great faith and have faith like the centurion, unashamed. And you know what happened to the servant? Guess what Jesus says? He says, he says this. I'll go back to Matthew. That would help me a lot. He says that Jesus said to the centurion, "Go, let it be done just as he believed it would." And his servant was healed at that moment. When you believe and have amazing faith for Jesus, mind-blowing faith, your problem, your situation, it is done. It is done. How many want you to have Jesus in your situation? How many want Jesus to be your healer? Because he can do it. You just got to believe. No cliches, no nothing, but you really need to have Jesus in your heart, in your relationships, in yourself. Because he's the one who can really do it for you. Who's ready to pray? Everybody stand up. Go ahead. Put your right hand on your heart. We're going to pray this. We're going to go ahead and start Praise Him. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment, for this opportunity, for everything you're able to do, Father God. Lord, we put you first in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds. Father God, we pray for fire to be everywhere we are. We pray for your love, for your mercy, for your gratefulness, Father God. We pray for faith that amazes you like the centurion amazed you in Israel, Father God. We love you. We appreciate everything you do. And Jesus, we pray that we're going to have an amazing rest of our week. The finals are done. Summer's starting. It's time to turn it up. In Jesus' name, I pray. What's everybody saying? Amen. Amen.